On June 11, 2013, Colorado's severe drought season erupted in the most destructive wildfire in state history. Two people died and more than 500 homes were destroyed as flames engulfed 22 square miles of the state's Black Forest region. Exactly three months later, September 11th, the skies opened along the front range of the Rocky Mountains. Rain fell like no one in Colorado had ever seen it fall before. More than a foot of rain in some places. We are indeed getting some new information about uh, some of the flooding that's going on, especially up in the uh, Boulder area. But you know, this storm is stretching all the way down into Colorado Springs, where we are just learning that a body was recovered this morning at South Nevada Night. At least eight people died. Nearly 2,000 homes were destroyed and 16,000 more damaged as flooding inundated an area nearly the size of Connecticut. So what we saw in this particular flood event is the rainfall amounts were truly unprecedented and have been estimated to be a 1,000 year return interval. As we get more moisture in a warmer atmosphere, warmer air could hold more moisture, we could have longer periods of time that it doesn't rain because the atmosphere is holding all this moisture. That increases the drought or the dry spells. But what climate change appears to be doing is increasing the odds or the chances of this kind of flood happening. As the world warms and the oceans warm, there's more water vapor in the atmosphere. So when the natural factors come together, that natural variability, there's more moisture available for more rain. One of the problems that people have wrapping their heads around this is what we're talking about with something like Hurricane Sandy or the 2013 Colorado floods is going from a very rare event to just a rare event. But then when the conditions come together, that natural variability, when we have the conditions that do make rain, there's more moisture available. And that is the trend we're seeing around the world and what's expected to continue in the future. We saw the low pressure area spinning over the... Nolan Deskin is Colorado State climatologist. As he watched from his office at Colorado State University in Fort Collins, he saw a storm forming unlike anything he had seen before. Northwards, said, Whoa, that's a really moist air mass for this time of year. And at first, the, the fire hose, as you might call it, was aimed at Arizona, westernmost New Mexico, and western Colorado. They sent me an email and said, what do you think about this? And I said, whoa, that's amazing. So already by Wednesday night, we got problems. Pouring rain throughout all of Boulder and urban flooding. And then with each passing hour, the magnitude of the water reaching the river channels growing. And then all the rivers coming out of the Front Range, foothills and mountains, all growing. Bigger magnitude of rains that I, that I believe we've ever seen we have data going back a full century, a little bit more. We don't think we've seen rains like this at those altitudes uh, to produce anything like this. So this is, this is like, oh, OK, we knew it was possible, we, but we haven't seen it happen. What actually happened was surprising. The thousand-year rain didn't produce a thousand-year flood. Whereas the flooding that resulted from the rain wasn't necessarily as unusual, although it, it still was quite unusual and it depends on where you were. In Boulder Creek and Boulder, we probably didn't even experience what the estimated 100 year flood is. But in other creeks to our north, especially the St. Vrain drainage and the Big Thompson River, um, they probably saw a flood that was a little bit more unusual than Boulder saw. And the reason is the rain is just one component. Flooding involves two sciences. There's the science of meteorology, that's the rainfall, and the science of hydrology, which is what happens to that water once it's on the ground. And that's just as important as the rain. Lessons learned from earlier floods meant Boulder and some other mountain towns had made adjustments to streets, sewers, and riversides that allowed the thousand-year rain to dissipate into a hundred-year or even a fifty-year flood. Well, the terminology, 100-year and 1,000-year event, is confusing, and it's also a little bit misleading. There's a lot of people, when they hear something like a 100-year flood, they think, well, if we just had one, we don't have to worry for another 100 years. Um, a 100-year flood is a flood that has the 1% chance, 1 in 100 chance, in any given year of happening. 
Another element is at play. Because of climate change, the so-called 100-year flood may happen more frequently. The, then our estimates of what the 100-year return period are um, might not be accurate anymore. There might be a higher return frequency than, than what our statistics show.